and we've got two old bull buffalo that are busy lying up on the bank. They've been here the entire day, or at least until uh, it was since I got here, which was at half past three this morning. Um, these buffalo have been have been lying up, basically just resting, chewing the cud. That is the posture that they're lying in at the moment is called the ruminating posture, and it's a way which ruminants. It's easy for them, therefore, to chew the cud. But there's also a few birds around here. We've got some lapwings over here. But we've also got a three-banded plover. Let me see if I can get in there for you. Busy coursing in the shallows. Not a bird. A bird that's fairly common, but you don't see that often. They're very shy. Let's have a look at that little guy there. And then there was another bird that caught my eye on a branch just here. Let's see if it's still there. There we go. There's a kingfisher. Now, you do get different kingfishers here to the ones that we find in Juma. And that is, as far as I know, as far as I can see, let's see if we can change this a little bit. So there we have a gray, gray ape. It's got a gray bib on, electric blue wings, Red beak at the top. I'm going to need some help with this one, everybody. But I've got a funny feeling that that is a gray hooded kingfisher. It's not one that we see very commonly in Juma at all. Isn't that just spectacular? Give me one second while I find my bird book quickly, which is in my library, which is just next to where I am at the moment. Will you look over there, excuse me, disappearing from... Uh, the screen. There we go. It's still there, which is a good thing. Let us open up the bird book and see what kingfisher we've got here, which is going to be a rare one, I'm sure, at least for our birders that come out of Juma. So here we go. So we're looking for kingfisher. <laughs> all right, and we go to page 88. It's not like James and all of them, which just rifle through their their apps at the moment and of course they don't have any blue kingfishers that I want to show you. Ah, here we go. All right, I'll tell you what, why don't you come and have a look at this bird in the camera. And see which one do you think it is. I think it is this one here. This is the one that I think it is because this one here is migratory and leaves us um, seasonally. So I think it is this one right here, which is the gray hooded. I think, I think so because it's got a gray that doesn't extend all the way onto the bottom belly. It's got a rufous chest that comes up underneath the bib. It's very common of the gray hooded. Ah, and Mr. R. Beard, you've also said the grey-headed kingfisher. So, there we go, grey-headed kingfisher, not an easy kingfisher to see whatsoever. In fact, I can count on my one hand the number of grey-headed kingfishers I've ever seen in my life. Probably no more than, I saw my first one at Sabi Sabi, my second and third one at Singita, and this is my fourth, this is my fourth sighting of a grey-headed kingfisher. Here you go. And gone. And just as quick as that, you don't see something that common. Isn't these crossing cameras just something fantastic? We're really having some fun here. All right. We can go and have a look. We've got multiple cameras over here at the moment. Why don't we go and have a look at what's happening at another crossing? Just down the stream. This is Dusty Crossing. Here we've got some East African Impala grazing on the banks of the Mara River. Aren't they just the most beautiful antelope, especially in this light, eh? Now, these antelope have a breeding season that pretty much stretches the entire year. They, don't, they have a rut, but it sort of stretches out forward and aft of the rut and keeps going for goodness knows how long. I'm looking forward to seeing, according to Brent at least anyway, these impala ewes are pretty much in a constant state of estrus and will go from one lamb, they wean one lamb, and their bodies will come into estrus again. And... Uh, and the males are therefore constantly in rut as well, which gives them massive amounts of testosterone, which increases horn length dramatically. There is a male bouncing around in the background over there. That's 
as an effect of all that testosterone? Impala. Just the same as what we see them do in May. Oh, sorry about that. The gremlins must be 